Hello, I am Beck. Welcome to my channel. Today we'll be drawing a D&D character based on the roll of the dice. So without further ado... Let's bring out the Tower of Destiny! So I found out after the fact that in order to multi-class as a barbarian monk, there are certain ability score minimums that the character needs to have. Uh, this one is lacking in, let's see, barbarian you need strength 13, fine. And for monk you need dexterity to be 13 and wisdom to be 13. So the dexterity is fine, but his wisdom is a bit low. Um, one way to solve this is obviously to just change the ability score if I was going to be playing in a game. Um, I would talk to the DM about if they cared about the meeting the minimum ability scores, but also an easy fix is to just change the ability score. Um, you can have it be a playthrough where you do a one-on-one -on -one session and have the character go through some sort of life experience where he gains wisdom um in this case it would need to be quite profound because <laughs> he's at an eight and he needs to be at a 13 um or you could just change the number it's a game um <laughs> there are no rules that say you can't just change the ability modifier to suit whatever it is you're trying to do the point of the game is to have fun so the guy that i'm drawing is his uh, whole vibe is based on the on the stats that I drew. So he's strong and he's dexterous. Um, his constitution is pretty normal. He's slightly more intelligent than average, but he's not a wise guy. He's got negative one to wisdom, but he's a little bit charismatic as well. He's got a plus one to charisma. So I saw him growing up amongst barbarians because that's the base. The first one I rolled, Barbarian, grew up amongst some pretty heavy hitters, um, some warriors, and I imagine it would be other centaurs. Uh, I see him, I saw him as a more modern guy, so um, <laughs> growing up amongst centaurs in a modern fantasy setting seems like something that would be fun to play and at some somewhere along the way um the way that he fights becomes different to your your standard barbarian uh the barbarians are based very much in rage so i imagine the centaurs have some centuries old conflict with whoever it is they're fighting and this guy got to a place where he realized he's not angry. He does that's not where his fighting strength is primarily coming from. His his fight is coming from the energy of the world around him, the way that a monk does. I struggled a lot trying to figure out how I wanted his hair to be. Sort of blowing in the wind or not blowing in the wind. <laughs> and then it, there's the, the hair on the tail and the hair on the head. Also just drawing a guy in general because I'm used to drawing women. Um, I wanted him to be really beefy and strong because his stats are... He's very strong guy. Um, and then I forgot how hands work. I forgot how to draw hands. Um, particularly when they're in a fist and especially if they're wrapped in the monk style of having your hands and wrist wrapped in um, bandages I guess <laughs> seems to be their aesthetic so I generally keep that in when it's a monk but uh, I don't really know what they're for hold all your muscles in maybe or when you're punching stuff it um, helps somehow if you know and you're watching this and 
<laughs> Tell me in the comments, what is the point of wrapping up your wrists if you're like a boxer or whatever? Um, yes, I could Google it, but I also don't care enough to try. So, yeah. Um, trying to get... I was going for like a mermaid effect <laughs> of the the horse to body, um, thinking about having the horse hair match the man's natural hair that would be on his body, because uh, that make, makes sense. Um, I did overthink the, um, the transition of man into horse, where you wouldn't, like, there aren't a lot of creatures where it looks like just one thing is sewn into the other thing. Usually you would have, like, the horse part of him would also be his skin so his whole body should be the same color but that would look really weird I think so I was just going for like the natural hair trying to transition into the horse hair yeah I thought it would be fun to have his um, non-horsey side be a little bit orcish. Not fully orcish, not like green or whatever. Um, I wanted, I mean drawing horses is hard enough so I spent most of my time using reference and trying to draw a horse. Uh, <laughs> but when I eventually got around to drawing the face I really wanted those orcish tusks to be part of it. Um, I thought it went in really well with his barbarian upbringing that the centaur heard that he was a part of were um, part orcish, part horse-ish. Um, and that really leaned into the, the vibe that he's got as sort of, he's a badass. He's, he's about having fun and smashing heads and causing a little bit of chaos. struggling with the hair here um, you'll see in a second that I just fully delete it <laughs> and start from scratch um, I get a source of inspiration and I I go in a completely different direction so watch out for that it's coming up soon here we go bye hair goodbye all of you stupid hair that I hate um, Just no hair, that's the answer. And I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner, but a headbanger like this guy, 100% has a mohawk, obviously. Yeah, um, maybe he's in a band, but he's not a bard. Like maybe he plays the drums because he likes to smash likes to smash things uh, <laughs> anyway really happy with the mohawk hair um, kind of brought everything together and this is where I started thinking about my color palette which you'll see in a minute and yeah I think it was around this stage that I decided to name him Rascal. I think that's a great name for someone with a mohawk. <laughs> that was my entire thought process. Uh, yeah, so this is Rascal. I also put way too much thought into how to do clothing for centaurs. A lot of the references I saw 
kind of ignore how clothes are supposed to work. Um, they sort of take human clothes and try to apply it to a centaur and just ignore the horse part. Whereas the main thing in my brain is that clothes sort of evolved from covering your most sensitive areas and covering your genitals and things. And the fashion came afterwards. Um, by the time I was actually drawing this, I kind of gave up on trying to figure out a way to cover up the genitals area of this guy without it being like, how did he get those pants on or how do horse pants even work? Um, and I just said, no, screw it. He's just got like a little vest and that's his clothing. And they're using horse fashion, which is to not really cover anything in terms of shame and it's more about dressage <laughs> so you don't you don't see this in the drawing but it did i did take a long time researching if anyone had mastered the art of how one covers a centaur's shame <laughs> Just adding in details now, some piercing, some some glamour, some glitz and glam. Um, I think I go in and do, yep, trying to see how man body hair works. Uh, <laughs> I did end up keeping some of it, but I really need to study how to draw hair and not just make it look like scribbly nothing. Um, I think I just kept the chest hair because the rest just looked like I was trying to do some weird cross hatching and failing. Um, and then I just cheated at shadows by putting him fully in the dark because he's at a rave or something like that. And doing my all time favorite thing of adding in highlights based on single light source. Hey. So yeah, this is Rascal, and he loves going to raves and smashing things. Barbarian, monk, multi-class, centaur. What do you think? If you like it, hit like on the video and comment, and please subscribe if you want to see more of these so that I know somebody out there loves me. Okay, bye. <laughs>